start. We're not showing <clears throat> the video that was on the schedule, uh, but we will adjust the, the homework schedule and ask some questions that uh, we feel that are important. All of you are getting so much information and the uh, video I think will uh, be sort of a culmination of what we want for sure that you will take away after the three days of being with us. Um, in a way, I feel like it's the first day of school. I'm used to being a classroom teacher. This is my first time to give any form of a lecture um, over Zoom, so this is a very new experience for me. Um, I thought the last two pre um, presentations were excellent to really give you a good foundation of, of Korean American history and the changes that were brought to Korea um, in the early 20th century. Um, I'd like to go over again, it's, it's hard to get in touch with what the experience of Japanese occupation must have been for the Korean people. Um, Americans are so used to so many freedoms and the, some people are just struggling wearing masks during a pandemic. They don't want their freedom taken away. And when you think of what was taken away from the Koreans for 35 years, um, they had no government. It was a Japanese government. Uh, they were to learn the Japanese language. Um, they could not speak Korean. Uh, Lucy Park's uh, father grew up during Japanese occupation. And of course he learned Japanese. And L Lucy told me a very touching story. At the end of life, he developed Alzheimer's. He couldn't remember Korean, but he could remember his Japanese. And Lucy had never taken Japanese, so she could, could, could not communicate with her father. So the residual effects of this have gone on and on over the years. Um, they had to take Japanese names, and Koreans historically have been very proud of their names. It's a good part of who they are. Uh, they no longer had their own history. The Japanese wrote what they thought was a Japanese history or Korean history. Uh, their culture was taken away. Uh, their music, they couldn't play their traditional instruments. They couldn't wear their traditional dress. Uh, they couldn't do their traditional dances. Um, in terms of their religion, they were to bow to Shinto shrines and face uh, Japan. Uh, there was a terrible story about um, Koreans praying in their church and the Japanese locked their doors and they set the church on fire. Um, you've heard about the comfort women and I will talk more about that in, in Dokdo, but the country was literally taken over. They were trying to rid the Koreans of their heritage and their culture. And this also divided the Korean people. There were those who worked with the Japanese, they had to provide for their families, and the Japanese did develop a certain degree of industrialization, but the advantages are all taken um, by Japan. But this divided the country because there were those people that collaborated uh, with the Japanese, and that caused understandable contention, um, tension with the Korean people. Um, we have not yet talked about Dokdo. Um, Docto is um, something that I think is very important to talk about. Docto are two little islands, there they are, uh, so I'm going to show them. Um, that, those are the Docto Islands, and they historically have been belonged to Korea. There's records way back to the 6th century and the Sh Shilla period uh, that claim these islands. During Japanese occupation, Japan took over the islands. And the islands themselves, as you can see, are basically rocky. I think there's only three or four people that might actually live there. It's a fishing area. Uh, Japan has always wanted to call this, this sea between Japan and Korea the Sea of Japan. And understandably, the Koreans prefer the name EC. But it's an important fishing area, but it's been a source of tension uh, repeatedly, um, especially after uh, the Japanese occupation of Japan. And um, any number of times uh, Japanese leaders have stated that the Dokdo really belongs uh, to uh, Japan. 
And of course, this upsets the Korean people because this is a sign of ongoing Japanese nationalism. And what really upset um, Koreans, it was, I think it was about 2008, 2009, when, when I was writing my book, it was a big issue at the time. And the uh, Minister of Education designed some teaching books for teachers so that all the children of Japan would learn that Dokdo belonged to Japan. Uh, another aspect of all of this, Abe, uh, the leader of Japan, his uh, grandfather was a war criminal. So all those things together um, are an indication of the ongoing struggle between Japan and uh, the Korean people. The other thing I wanted to, to show, and uh, would you show the slide of the peace, uh, the peace woman? This is at the Glendale Library. And for those of you that don't live in California, Glendale is a suburb of Los Angeles. And it is a, a large population of Koreans. Um, and going back to what Ed Park said, uh, Glendale has quite a good reputation um, for the quality of education for students. So there's a large number. And money was raised to um, create this uh, comfort woman and to put it beside the uh, Glendale Library. When Japan heard about this, it was very upset. And prior to that time, uh, Japan and, uh, uh, and Glendale had a student exchange program and Japan was very upset by uh, this peace woman or representative of the comfort woman uh, that they ended the program. So that that is uh, some of the in information that I wanted to, to pass on to you that we weren't able to cover uh, to, any, uh, to any great extent. And I think today as Americans was, are struggling with the, all the developments and we're living with our past history and, and the issues related it, I, I'm hoping that you can think in the context of the United States um, that we're struggling and we should be very proud of how the Koreans overcame all their challenge, challenges and got independence. And uh, one other thing I think I would want to mention is the Korean War that um, after liberation from Japan, they were, you know, thrilled that um, the, the Japanese were defeated in the war, but then the country was divided. And then they had five years of tension between the North and the South, and then the uh, Korean War erupted. So it was 50 years of struggle, and the United States is really struggling. And just for months, and it's, it's taken a, its toll on all of us. And uh, I have infinite respect for the Korean people and what they've achieved over time. And I can think of one other thing um, that was mentioned yesterday, and I, I wanted to speak up, but you were talking about how well the Korean people have adjusted to dealing with uh, uh, COVID-19 and wearing masks. And the United States, so many people say, I don't want to wear a mask, it's interfering with my freedom. But Confucianism, uh, Korea has been the most Confucian of all um, nations in the world. And Confucianism emphasizes education, education, education. It's everything. Um, Confucianism emphasizes the importance of the family and the community. Um, and I tend to feel, and I would love input from all of you, but I tend to feel one of the reasons why Korea has been so much more successful is that immediately think of what's best for the community, not what's best for themselves. So they put on masks and get testing and they're doing much better than we are. So that's all I have to say. And I don't know how much more time I have, but I don't think very much. Yes, this so. is perfect. Oh. Thank you.